Right, okay, it's going to be the final segment of the FIFA World Cup. You know, all the teams are arriving home right now. We have Shola Rogers in the studio good, this, this morning. Good morning, good to have you. Good morning, guys. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here once again. Yeah. All uh, right, so Fine. we're going to be talking about the World Cup. This probably <laughs> be the last time we're having segments for the World Cup. Yeah. Uh, we might still be talking about Russia 2018, but no it's sad, special. It? Yeah, it's over, I mean. Yeah. It was so short. We, we, we thought it wasn't going to end, but, but it did. It is, and it, I'm already suffering the withdrawal, withdrawal <laughs> and I'm like, why? <laughs> you know? And you, you're looking if there's going to be any other thing that could you know, take our minds, grab our attention. Yeah. I'm struggling. I'm struggling <laughs> to see. Maybe when the uh, European season um, starts, we'll see. But, but let's talk about the French team, Celebration Galore, uh, receiving the highest honor, the French president. Like he promised, uh, if you guys get to the final, I'm going to be there. He showed up, and they were received at the airport. A, a lot of celebration, and uh, some, some are saying it's well worth it. Oh, yes, it is. You know, look, um, two years ago, they hosted the Euros and they lost at home. You get, and of course, a lot of people were disappointed and all of that. But they've taken that uh, defeat and they've now turned it into something bigger. So it's well deserved. It's an honor that they deserve getting the highest honor in the land and also winning the biggest trophy when it comes to sports because football is arguably the biggest sport in the world as, as much as it hurts me to say it, but it's the truth, you know. So they really deserve it. The fans deserve it because they turned out in large numbers, even flying to Russia, you know, on their own time and all of that. It was a big deal. Uh, I saw the pictures. It was. I, I wish I was in Paris. Right? So, so, so the pictures, you know. the streets, the cleaners had to clean up Yesterday morning, yeah. because they was they, they partied all, all night, night yeah. on Sunday. They had to clean up because these guys were coming, and the city of Paris had to be clean. Yeah. And, and the guys yeah. did overtime. Yeah, Macron, Macron was in Lagos a few weeks ago, yeah. and he was like, okay, now that the Super Eagles are out, I hope you people will we'll support, support France, <laughs> France, and everything. And we all adopted and, France. You know, everybody adopted France. Yeah, we're now farms in. Everything. <laughs> you know, uh, all the talk about uh, France being um, uh, an African team, you know, <laughs> I think we're overdoing it though, because everybody's just going on about it. It is a fact, you know, based on their own policy of assimilation. Yes. So a lot of people have come from all over the world. Easily and integrated that, into you know. their system. Look, look uh, a French guy. Is named Hernandez. You know, I you're mean, like, it's not regular to have, we know that it's usually, Griezmann. you know, Griezmann German. and all of that. <laughs> you know, but look, they, they have made it work for them. So just like 98, it has happened again in 2018, the same kind of makeup, the same kind of setup, and there's one recurring decimal there, Didier Deschamps. Who has always been there. I mean, he was the captain mm -hmm. the last 19. time they won it. And now they're winning it, here's the coach. Wow, what a story. That's a huge one, a good one. And just look at them, the president, and of course, the first lady, all of them just singing, joyful. And that's what a winner title, that's what it does to you. Yeah, <laughs> the what, what, effect. One of the pictures that went viral after yeah. the finals was um, <laughs> The uh, the um, president being taught how to dab yeah. by uh, <laughs> yeah. Paul, Paul Pogba and Co. You know, and it shows you how liberal. Yeah, Macron is and our and our advanced. You know, it brings me to this. Is it because he's young? You know, a lot of people will put that out. He's a young president. This guy loves football. Some of the guys that are even older than him. Didier Deschamps is older yeah. uh, than him. It, it could be uh, Loris. It could be brothers with Loris because the age gap. It, yeah. it's not much. Is, is it because he's young or the love of football is just so much that doesn't matter what your age is? I, I think it's a blend of everything because he has a lot of love for football. Uh, let me quickly go to China where the, the Chinese president or leader, as he's referred to, loves football so yeah. much that they're investing billions, billions of dollars. In. That's how much passion these people have for the sports because they also understand the power of sports, you understand? And so Macron being young is a plus for him. But he also has passion, passion for sports. For it. Uh, virtually everything he does, yeah. you should have seen him in Lagos partying yeah. and everything. And, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's real. It he shows you that, look, we, we have, I don't know, in Africa, and we're, still, those we're still caught up with some systems that hold us back, you know. We saw the medal presentation yeah. in the rain, mm -hmm. you know. At some point, they, were, they didn't have enough umbrellas, yeah. and these guys didn't really care. Okay. If you go and check out, if you go and check out the value of the suits and all that, you find out that they cost a lot. But hey, these guys stood there in the rain, you know, presenting and celebrating. And we, there's a lot for us to learn. The there's a lot for us to learn from all of these things that we've seen in recent times. I keep well, replaying. I think we have okay. one we'll do more than this because I feel you know that that joyful mood. Yeah, you know, I mean, you probably can just, you will want, not. You want to, 
It will not forget be yeah. know, whatever you think you are, whoever you think you are, and just you know <laughs> go ahead and roll with the system. As, as I think that's what he did. So yeah. I didn't really see anything different. I do. Who could have done the same? Our president could have done the same. I mean, he could have entered the ring to present medals if we had won the World okay. Cup. Okay. Because it's <laughs> once in a lifetime, you don't have every opportunity. France waited 20 years to to get to this stage. So, to, to win so when again. you get to that stage, you just want to do everything and ensure that. It's memorable. Hey, well, you know, most people who have come out to draw comparisons have basically done it largely because we know how we run things back home in Africa. Mm -hmm. and We haven't won the World Cup yet. We know how we run down. things back home. It's not about winning the World Cup okay. alone. We're, we're, we're talking about, about organization. organization and all of those things. Look, this uh, I've been watching the World Cup for quite a few years, and this is the best World Cup I've seen in my entire life. Okay. I make bold to say that based on the quality of play, based on the stadiums, the fans, everything about this World Cup has been perfect. And I had fears about Russia based on racism and some mm -hmm. other things that we had read and heard about, you know. Remember when Osase was playing in Russia oh, yeah. and all the issues he had with uh, racism and all of that. A then couple with, of players. Yeah, a couple of other African players and players who have dark skins have experienced uh, racist chants yeah. and stuff. But none of that happened this happened. time around. The ultras were kept at bay. Of course. You know, the same ultras who went to France to, cause, to foment <laughs> cause trouble, trouble during the Euros and everything, they were all kept at bay. It was, it's really, really perfect. And I, I want to give uh, kudos to the Russians. I, I'm replaying this moment in my mind. Forgive me, I have to say, I'm replaying the moment in my mind, in my mind where, I mean, the, the bus, the parades, how the city was on a lockdown, but there was no commotion. Yeah. I mean, you look at there and was, that's, that. Those are the things. The, there was commotion, though. <laughs> no, no. I mean, when I say commotion, <laughs> control, you're, control, talking about, control. you're talking about traffic and everything. I, I'm looking at because ca can we do those kind of things? I'm, I'm just, you know, yeah, trying look to at what Cecilia said, said and roll out the carpet, brought them to the palace. We can do it. Well structured. Yes, Is we it, can. You, we need to learn from everything that's gone down at the World Cup. Um, take. Take, take a cue from the Senegalese team and the Japanese team. After every match that yeah. they played, their fans stayed back to pick up after themselves okay. in the stadium. At the last game that the Japanese team played, you know, when they were knocked out, they actually cleaned up their, their dressing, dressing room. room. Yeah. Now, if you've been in a dressing room before, after a victory, you know it's crazy. It's crazy then yeah. after defeat, it's even worse. Nobody wants to talk to anybody and all of that. And these guys still took time out to do all of that. That's why they it's went back home, the they got a hero's welcome. Other teams that were even knocked out early got heroes welcomes mm -hmm. in their countries and all of that. It shows you that we're looking beyond victory alone. That it's not only about winning the trophy, it's about participating, which is one of the tenets of um, the Olympic movement and which is something that everybody is imbibing. And once again, best World Cup ever. Okay. Okay, from the French camp now, talk about the Croatians. Also, they are celebrating. They finished second. And when you finish second and you never thought you would get to that stage, the last, their best outing was a third place That's finish. It. And that was also France 90, where, of course, uh, France won. But right there in Croatia, the fans, you know, celebrated. Of course, the players had to come out, you know, and actually I had to tell the fans thank you for all that they've done and everything. And if you take a look at the pictures we've seen, uh, okay, uh, these are the pictures, you know, coming from that scene there, where you have most of the fans are coming out, the players also just emotional about everything that went down in Russia. We need, we need, we need to um, also put this into perspective. These guys struggled to qualify for Russia. It was not as if they had this. Um, they had blitz, it all together. You know, they, it was not as if they were topping their group going to Russia. No, that's why nobody gave them a chance. They came in as ranked outsiders to get to the level that they got to, and to think that they would make it all the way to the to the final, hardly would any pundit or analyst or whatever be able to say that Croatia would have gone this far. We want to say kudos to the entire team. They've done well. Yeah, they've done well. If you can just see the pictures coming from that celebration, where you have the whole city are filled up. You wonder, you have about 4 million people right there. But if you see the pictures that we show you right now, it's about, I mean, the whole city filled up. You'll be thinking, does that mean everyone? Left? I mean, thank you, <laughs> who is the whole? Like, every, one that, maybe they, they didn't say that. I think it, it was a public holiday or something like that. They didn't even have to Monday. declare it. Look, <laughs> the truth is, they are the president who paid their way to yeah. go watch, watch virtually every game that every they Every game. You know? It was after one or two games that the organizers even knew yeah. that she wasn't sitting in the VIP stand and they had to usher her there and all of that. It shows you the kind of system that they already have in place. The passion that that woman has shown would definitely rub off on everybody. And the Croatians all came out, you know, so loud behind their team because yeah. the truth still remains that 
it's difficult to di uh, to divulge politics from sports. They've had some yeah. issues in past and some moments, uh, you know. So now sports has been able to you know mm -hmm. at least rejig them and bring them up and uh, reduce it, the pain yeah. somewhat. I, I mean, I, I like the recovery immediately after the tears. I mean, you saw the tears final they lost, but just few some few moments the fans just got it back together. And it was celebration all the way. That, that's another lesson. And, uh, you know, the, the, it's instructive that people are able to quickly accept the fact that, look, this is where we are and move on. Nigerians have no fault for forgiving <laughs> players from two World Cups. Yeah. Ago. I don't want to single out any player's yeah. name, but we know that two, three World Cups down the line, we're still ruining the fact that we lost and we're still... We, we, People's careers have been ended based on <laughs> yeah, their performance at the World Cup. You know, and all of that. And we need to understand that when our players come to play for us, yeah. they're putting a lot on the line. It's so no matter what, we man. should just get behind the team. And this is what it means to get behind the team. We've seen it done by virtually every country. We didn't even know when the Eagles came into Nigeria. You know, you see, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Do you want to say that? Do you want to say that? <laughs> no, I didn't say anything. Yeah. I mean, you know, no, because ideally, regardless of the result. We were supposed to at least receive our team. Yes. You get. We're so, look, we should. Okay, subsequent we should, World Cup, we should, I mean, stay, well, no matter it, it, what it happens, it's just Lord. one game. Look, there, 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 are over, say, okay. there are over 200 teams affiliated to FIFA. Only 32 made it to the World Cup, and you are one of the 32. Come on. We should at least celebrate those boys, but hey, I'm sure Brandy Dou is based in Russia. He will just stay back. From there, everybody's flying to God knows where and all of that. Uh, a, a table is already in camp. Balogun is probably in camp with his new team also. No, but at least we should have at least just received our team, you yes. know? We, we, let's, let's, move, them, let's move away you. from this thing like, oh, they've lost and we've not discarded give, them. Give them a pat on the back. No. Yeah, thank you for trying. And also, I mean, you, you're saying is the best World Cup ever. You've been watching how many World Cups now? Three, quite, four, quite five. A, quite, quite. I, I know, I've seen more than four. More than four. Let, let, <laughs> let me not talk too much. Because I don't so, know man, so many World Cups <laughs> now that well, yeah. uh, U.S. President Donald Trump is not the person who was amazed by what Russia was able to host. This is in Finland, Hensikin, where he's meeting with uh, Vladimir Putin, talking about Russian president. But then he had to take time out to actually congratulate him for being able to host one of the best World Cups ever. Well, first of all, Mr. President, I'd like to congratulate you on a really great World Cup, one of the best ever, from what everybody tells me, one of the best ever, and also for your team itself doing so well. I watched quite a bit in the United States, we call it soccer, and I watched quite a bit of it, and I watched the entire final and uh, the semifinals, and uh, they were really spectacular games, but it was beautifully done. So congratulations on that. <laughs> most beautiful game, yeah. USA, Mexico, Canada, when? 2026, 48, 42 teams? We can't wait. We'll, we'll see what happens in that one. Uh, let's also take this one, uh, U.S. President Donald Trump congratulating yeah. the Russians. But they've been hit. One of the stadiums used uh, for uh, the World Cup, badly damaged uh, by the rain. All of <laughs> this has happened immediately. It, it, it doesn't. That. <laughs> okay, that's another one. We really waited for all this. I mean, they were celebrating two days ago, successful hosting, giving everybody beers, hugging yeah. everybody. But this uh, just comes after the games, and, and you think maybe they have the resources to just recover quickly. There's some things that you just cannot stop. Natural disasters are one of them. And of course, in some parts of the world, it's monsoon season now. Rains are falling at alarming rates and all of that. The rain is falling at an alarming rate, sorry. Uh, so regardless of what it is, it's going to happen, but it's how you recover <laughs> from it that really matters. Okay. okay. All right. I'm sure they'll be able to put it uh, up. All right, we'll go for a break now. We'll come back. We'll just wrap up the segment.